by Paul Douglas and welcome Ken Barnell. Tonight's episode of Law & Order will be rebroadcast Sunday, May 29th at 11.05 p.m. so that we may bring you the following CARE TV special presentation. business is sort of predicated on change. The fact that we've kept the team together, you know, for as long as we have is, is a minor miracle. It's a final farewell to Paul Douglas and maybe to Kent Herbeck. It hasn't been as much fun the last couple years because I hate spending time in a training room. But Dee Long says she's not calling it quits just yet. And whether or not I have power uh, isn't really that material. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis are two of the most powerful and profitable producers in the record industry. But even though they're working with the stars, the music duo stayed down to earth. Titles mean nothing. Arrogance mean, it means nothing. You know, the job getting done means everything. And that's what's important here. The job for Norm Green was moving the North Stars south. And while Minnesota's been left out in the cold, his hockey team is the hot ticket in Dallas. All tonight on a Pat Miles special. It's dark and abandoned here now at the Old Met Center. But three years ago, this place was full, and the Minnesota North Stars were playing their hearts out in the Stanley Cup Finals. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. It's still hard to believe, but the Minnesota North Stars are now the Dallas Stars. That's where owner Norm Green headed after what he called a disastrous year, financially and emotionally. There was the $6 million Green said he lost and the sexual harassment suit filed by his former assistant, Carrie Deedsick. Tonight, in his first interview on the subject, Norm Green talks about why he left Minnesota, the mistakes he made, and how, in spite of the phenomenal success he's having in Texas, he is still haunted by the past. Texas hockey fans pay more for their tickets, scream louder for the players, and sell out the arena. It's a scene not many in Minnesota would have predicted when owner Norm Green packed up and headed south, taking with him a hockey team and a game that has its roots in the north. But the hard-hitting and the young, good-looking guys have caught on in Dallas, and even if they don't quite understand the nuances of the game, Norm Green has found a community that has enthusiastically embraced this sport and put his profit sheet back in the black. Do you think this change has rejuvenated the team? Oh, it has, and I'll tell you what, it gives them a fresh start. Uh, they have no, uh, uh, nobody saying, well, you did that five years ago, you did, did that ten years ago, well, you always lost in the first round, all that stuff. It's all brand new here, so they can, they can really flow. Um, they love the warm climate, they love the no taxation. And they really, and they love being the, the new guy in town that is really popular. You know, there are going to be a lot of people in Minnesota who hear you say that, and it's going to really hurt. They're still smarting. Yeah, they are, and, I, and, and the, none of them, I don't believe, are smarting anywhere near as much as I. When you've thought back about that, that period of time, Norm, is there any one thing you would have done differently in retrospect? Yeah, probably the biggest mistake was on a, on a personnel level is, that, is to let Lou Nanny go. I, I think that was a mistake. Lou Nanny was a, is a good hockey, knowledgeable person. And um, and what we and I was under the mistaken impression when it when it came to Minnesota that you need to have a Minnesota people and a fresh new start and and uh, as a result we had all new Minnesota people none with experience. Have you spent much time looking back? Yeah, I think about it a lot. Uh, it, it's hard not to. Uh, when when you put your heart and soul into something as we did trying to make Minnesota work, and you almost 
blew everything you ever owned as far as uh, assets are concerned. And we're not a big company, but uh, uh, when you lose the kind of money we did in Minnesota, and I don't know if Minnesotans, Minnesotans really uh, uh, um, believe that we did lose as much, but we did. I, I don't think people trusted you no. at well, the end that you were telling the truth uh, and that there was, that was not really the yeah. reason why you were leaving. I think that the, the biggest difficulty in, in the, the public understanding the real reason was the mixed signals they were getting from the organization. Uh, I would publicly make a statement, which were, was accurate. We lost six million dollars a year. We're going to have lost 20 million if we stay one more. And, and, and it was supported by Price Waterhouse to statements made by, well, Pat Garcia. I mean, perhaps we shouldn't identify a single person, but, but, but he, in the final analysis, uh, uh, I don't know if he purposely gave out misinformation, but he certainly didn't give out correct information. But when they get mixed signals from the organization, from a man in charge, uh, then, uh, uh, then it's tough on the press to, to really identify who's telling, telling the truth. And of course, you, you cling to the, to, the, to the guy, you don't cling to the guy that is moving the franchise. Norman has said a variety of critical things over the course of the past year about me and about other people who, who were part of our organization and, and about a whole lot of people in, in Minnesota. There's a certain amount of, of anger that he's carrying with them that I guess is, 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 is understandable. But How difficult was the sexual harassment suit for him? I, you were closer to him than anyone here during that period of time. He became a different person after after uh, that whole issue initially surfaced. The sexual harassment thing was very, very difficult. Uh, the, it was difficult because I know, it was, I know it wasn't guilty. I know what I did was not wrong. Uh, I think the interpretation that people put on it was magnified by the moving of the franchise and that somebody saw an opportunity, I think, to, uh, to, to make a profit on it. Norm, you said, speaking about the sexual harassment suit, that you would never settle it. You know, and you settled it. Had I been guilty, I probably would have settled on day one. But because I wasn't, uh, I decided to fight it. But the, the it wasn't a court case I was fighting. It wasn't a, uh, an issue of sexual harassment. It was strictly uh, 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 if you don't uh, pay, you're going to get your uh, another article in the newspaper uh, again and again and again. You whatever I know step in. You're a good man. What's your name? In Minnesota, Norm Green was a high-profile owner. He attended games, walked the concourse, and talked to countless civic organizations. But in Dallas, he's reversed role. So behind the scenes here that office workers at team headquarters rarely, if ever, see him. And he's made it a policy to steer clear of the media. Norm, is Dallas a better fit for you and your family? I've read in the paper where people have said that I never really fitted into Minnesota. Quite the opposite here. We've, we've uh, probably every name you know here uh, in Dallas that is well known uh, uh, has already uh, talked to us and had us in their home and has socialized with us and pulled us aside and, and bought season tickets and uh, and the reception by the corporate community here is is is, is more than nice. It's powerful. It's amazing the, the turnout that we had. You know, you never expect down this hot weather you know to think about. You know, hockey, but uh, I tell you, it's been going great. In less than a year, Green has already earned the honor previously bequeathed on the likes of Dallas sports greats Jerry Jones and Emmett Smith. The Big D Award, given to the individual credited with contributing the most to the local sports scene in Texas. You went from one extreme to the other, didn't you, Norm? <laughs> well, we had uh, pretty good success in the Stanley Cup in 91, and uh, pretty well received, uh, perhaps limitedly, and uh, perhaps more openly here. When you read and hear about the situation Marv and Harv are in with the Target Center and the Timberwolves, does it make you feel somewhat better, though, knowing that you weren't singled out for special treatment no. that Marv and Harv are getting the same? You know, it's hard to believe that after the community lost the North Stars for not having done something, um, and the simplest thing was to have made this building deal. Because had the city... Would you have stayed? Oh, we, the deal had was the done. city done that? The deal was done. Had the city bought the building, we had a handshake deal with Marvin, 
where we had all the box revenue, it was a pretty good deal. Um, is, is, would it have been as good there as it is here? No, I don't think so. Uh, we're anxious now to, uh, to focus on a new building here. There's a tremendous amount of support for a new building. Somebody said that you couldn't be more popular here if you were handing money out. Our building is filled. Uh, the last 21 games in a row, roughly, have been filled up and at, at uh, good ticket prices. And our future looks very bright. So from a personal level, uh, it's what uh, every sports owner in the world would dream about. Norm Green says he couldn't find anyone to rescue him when he was trying to keep the North Stars in Minnesota. The same certainly couldn't be said, though, of Marv Wolfenson and Harvey Ratner, who had support from city leaders, civic officials, even the state legislature, which voted to buy the Target Center in a move they believe would keep the team in the Twin Cities. That's why it came as such a shock and a disappointment this week to find out the team had been sold and was now on its way to New Orleans. But perhaps no one was as surprised as Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who believed they were in serious negotiations to buy the team. Coming up, you'll meet these two Minnesota music men who have made their fortune with a lot of hard work and an abundance of talent. Karen Yeager's a First Bank customer, not just because she can transfer funds by phone through Fastline or use her Checkster card instead of writing checks or get an account summary from a Fast Bank ATM machine. Karen's a loyal customer because only First Bank puts so many ways of handling the family's money right at her fingertips. We inspect the porcelain on steel surface for durability, check the triple burners to heat evenly, and the patented flavorizer system for versatility. We test every gas valve and gauge for accuracy, and even evaluate the swing-up tables for maximum utility. The Weber Gas Barbecue. Of all the testing, examining, and retesting that goes into it, the true test is what comes out of it. If it's weather, it's great outdoors. The time, 10 days only. The place, your Northland Ford dealer. The reason, Ford's big event. Your Northland Ford dealer has special allocations of the best-selling trucks in America. Save thousands on selected F-Series pickups, Rangers, Explorers, Vans, even the new front-wheel drive Windstar. Just look for the special big event tags posted on every vehicle. It's the best time to save on the year's best selection. It's Ford's big event. Now through May 31st at your Northland Ford dealer. You don't want to miss it. They say you are what you eat. So why not eat the best quality, freshest fruits and vegetables you can from Cub Foods, where you get the lowest overall prices and the most beautiful produce. Of course, uh, beauty is a relative term. Cub Foods, lower prices, every aisle, every shelf, every day. Being cool and comfortable this summer doesn't mean running your air conditioner ragged. Energy-saving maintenance will help it breathe easier. Keep grass clippings and leaves away from the outside condenser unit. Change the furnace filter every month. And get professional maintenance every two to three years. By using energy wisely, you'll save money and help the environment. Jam, 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 Lewis, 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 Lewis. It is, it's, it's black music that we do. But the basis to what we do is always a, a, a good song. Once you make the music, something happens, or nothing happens. Fortunately for us, something happened. People like the music, they consume the music, and that put us in a position to do business. Somebody done change your mind. Somebody... I don't know, it's just a joy. It's just like, wow. It's like hearing your, your song come to life, because we have to have a... Someone has to bring our songs to life, because we can't sing them ourselves. Ten million records. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I did. And this is what I stand for. Like it? Cool. If you don't, cool. You know, and we both share that same feeling, so. We need a little snap, a uh, little snappage here. So I've got to solve this problem now, baby. We've 
been able to, I think, be as successful as we've, we've been as a team is because of the love and the friendship and the fact that we're in it together. Between the two of us, we never have a bad day. You know, you've been phenomenally successful in your business, in your music, and, and yet I read that you two don't even have a legal contract as partners. Best contract. That's, yeah, handshake contract. Oh, that's, you know, trust, respect. At the time we actually made that decision, I don't think we ever foresaw what a uh, big decision it actually was. Because we really, all we were talking about at the time, we weren't talking about money at all. We were talking about, we're going to split everything 50-50. And everything wasn't anything at that point, except uh, love and respect we had for each other. Today, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who became friends in junior high school, are splitting millions of dollars, money they earn by building their own music empire. Not Los Angeles, though, but in the most logic-defined of places, their own hometown, Minneapolis. In 1994, Flight Time Productions, the company they built on a dream and a bank loan, is where Jimmy and Terry write and produce for some of the biggest names in the industry. Against the odds, these two men have become persevering power brokers in a business known for consuming its talent. Do you feel it's been more difficult as, as black men running a business than it would have been for some of the other people in your industry? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, you definitely have to say yes. <laughs> yeah. When we sought out to set up our business, to set up our studio, uh, we had a lot of problems. Uh, I, and I can't say not only, well, probably because we were black, but also because it was the music business. It was kind of like talking a foreign language up here at first when we were trying to do it. And, you know, it was like, well, here, these are all our records on the charts here. And it's like, yeah, so what does that mean, you know? I have to say one of the people that, that really took us under his wing, so to speak, financially was uh, Carl Polat, who, uh, when he owned Marquette Bank, and he actually sought out our business. We saw a little bit of him in us. As it turned out, Carl Polad may have seen a lot of himself in Jimmy and Terry, who wanted to follow in the footsteps of their banker and own a professional sports team. For weeks, they have been in costly behind-the-scene negotiations to buy the Timberwolves. It looked like it was all over early this week, though, with the announcement that the team had been sold to a group from New Orleans. The owners of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Marv Wolfenson and Harvey Ratner, have reached agreement to sell the team to a New Orleans group. But according to Jimmy, it's not over yet, and they are still trying to put a deal together that would keep the NBA in Minnesota. In the meantime, Jimmy and Terry juggle this latest venture in between recording sessions at flight time, their studio in Edina. Hi, Hi Janet, hey, how are you? Fine, nice to meet you. This is my fiance, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Jimmy and Terry met Janet Jackson years ago and recognized her as their kind of artist. The collaboration has resulted in three gold albums, including the latest release called Janet. A recording session last year in their studio they knew Janet would be a winner but no one imagined the kind of success this release would have already it sold over 10 million records won a Grammy and earned Jimmy Terry and Janet their first ever Academy Award nomination for the song again the Vegas thing what about, uh, again. a little again? So I have nightmares of, like, being on the uh, Grammys or the Academy Awards, playing this on the piano and not being able to do it. I'll play it. There you go. Heard from a friend today, she To sing again, accompanied by one of her collaborators, Jimmy Jam, Janet Jackson. It was sort of scary. You know what? It made me realize how rusty I am um, because I hadn't played the song since uh, we recorded it. It was a great evening. Do you pick and choose the artist that you, you're going to work with? Absolutely. We kind of think of it as a, a party, okay? There's, this, this person is the party. What can we bring to the party to enhance the party? Hats, whistles. If we can bring something, then we consider it. 
Now you you work with your your wife. I mean, producing. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that tough? I mean, or is that fun? Well, you, you or how does about, that work out? You, you talk about the hardest project I've, <laughs> I've ever Your done. Your turn. <laughs> you really want to know what I think? No, my wife's project is always the hardest project for me because it's personal. It's, it, it, it doesn't just stay at the studio on the console on the tape. It gets in the bed with me. It comes in my bathroom in the morning and asks me what, what am I going to do that day. Okay, let's get the first verse again. I never die in love with just like honey. Karen White met Terry when he helped produce her second record. It was a professional relationship that produced a gold album and also a trip down the aisle when the couple decided they liked more than just making music together. Do you ever have any uh, arguments in the studio over <laughs> what's the right oh, way to no. go? No, we never have arguments. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. Um, I'm very opinionated and that's what he likes about me, though. Strong woman. And, um, you know, he's strong, so the best idea wins. So I'll go toe to toe if I believe in it. See you in a little bit, Asher. Bye bye. See ya. Terry feels very strongly about the family unit. Oh, too. yeah. That's one of the things that attracted me to him. Terry, are you surprised that your good friend here is getting married finally? <laughs> I'm shocked, but I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm glad to see that he's ready to make that kind of commitment. Not that he hasn't been doing all those things, but the fact that he is going to take the vow. Lisa, I love you enough. Okay, okay. To no. do this, you know, I think that's great. <laughs> that's wonderful. People who know you say that you have this image of yourself as the sort of the consummate bachelor. I don't know. This is, this is what a tough question. <laughs> I just felt if you were with the right person, you were with him. It was the right person. You were with him. What difference did marriage make? What was the difference? And now I feel like I still don't know how, how psyched I am about the actual ceremony. The idea of being married is a great idea. I think it's the fear of the wedding day <laughs> than actually being married. His mother and, and him were really close. I think he never saw a relationship work you know, marriage work, and that's what scared him. But the sense of family he had with his mother, and, you know, I think that's what he needs. Their wedding is set for June, but Jimmy and Lisa have already built their home together on Lake Minnetonka. I think people perceive this wild, fast life, and it could be, and that's why we live here. Today, Hollywood honors Thank you. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis with a star on the Walk of Fame. The L.A. scene has never intimidated them, but the lifestyle here has never seduced Jimmy or Terry either. They seem comfortable around the big names, but most at home with the average fan, many of whom turned out to honor them when they were awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. These are two brothers that I dearly, dearly love. Everyone they work with, they give a different type of tapestry, and I respect that. Today, we congratulate you both. And may your star always shine brightly. I love you guys very much. It's great because stars are, you know, people think of stars being in the sky. We think of ourselves as down to earth. So there's our star right down on the ground. That's perfect. Exactly. As a kid growing up, did you feel, both of you or either one of you, that you could have gone either way? I knew I could have, either at any day or time. You have to present to people the other side, that there is something else. There's another alternative. So we have to build some institutions for the future so that there's some kind of blueprint that the, the, the new generation of people are going to see. Their latest business venture, Perspective Records, is headquartered in Los Angeles. The label includes the sounds of blackness and mint condition. Mint condition in the house. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. The band worked as the warm-up act for Janet Jackson's concert last winter in Milwaukee. Who look, everybody like the monitors tonight? I did. Mine was, I was happy tonight with my monitors. Okay. You liked them because they were too loud. You know, you, uh, you guys could have been performers as well and chose not to be. I think we both felt our strengths were behind the scenes. Even in the time, we weren't the focal point. You don't need no partner. You can walk on and on. 
The time was a band Prince put together back in 1981. And it was Prince who handpicked Jimmy and Terry as the keyboard and bass players. Jellybean Johnson was the drummer. Today, he works as a producer at Flight Time. I think a lot of the confidence came from those, those three, two or three years we spent in the time. Because you could just see the confidence just coming out in all of us. Because everyone in that band uh, eventually did something. They're both two really strong-willed people, and they're both very, very immensely talented. He fired them, I think, in eight, Right before the movie. Right you know. before the movie. Purple Rain. You two could have been in that movie. Could have. Could have. Should have. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make it. What happened? How'd you know we weren't in it? Everybody thinks we were in it. We missed a gig. Oh, yeah, we were late. Yeah, we were really late. We missed it. We missed it. We were in Atlanta actually producing uh, the SOS band. There was a snowstorm in Atlanta now, and the airport shut down. Well, it turned out we, fi we finally missed the gig. We finally got to town. <laughs> At the end of the tour, we kind of got fired. Have you ever got the sense that uh, Prince regretted his decision? No. Being the boss now, being in that position, I understand why he did it. I do the same thing. So, so no animosity then? Oh, absolutely. A lot of love and respect for Prince, nothing but. We wouldn't be here without him. I mean, he's the one that gave us our break and uh, inadvertently gave us another break by, by firing us. We're going to talk about a man. There's a lot of things you can call this man, kind of like you can call ourselves. Cute, pretty, fine, handsome, handsome whatever. whatever. At the Rhythm and Blues Foundation Awards last March in New York, Jimmy and Terry took the stage along with some of the industry's legendary talents and presented the Ray Charles Lifetime Achievement Award to the flamboyant Little Richard. So now it's almost like we get a chance to give back to them, not enough, but a little something, where we say, thank you for being there to have your music as inspiration and for you to break down the barriers so that being a black man in the business isn't as hard as it would have been. It's just as I hope we're making it easier for the next generation. Will you be working together for the rest of your lives? I mean, do you see that as, as the future? I think our past will, I mean, our, our lives will just go on different paths, but I think we will always be, you know, we will always be connected. Up next. So let me ask you this again. You did nothing wrong. I did things that uh, certainly might have been unwise. I didn't do anything unethical. Dee Long defends her media war-torn reputation, and later, he builds his reputation in the backyard. But in the Windy City, Paul Douglas will have a bird's eye view. Now, are you gonna design your own backyard? Uh, yeah, but it's not a, it's, it, it's gonna be a weather deck, a rooftop terrace, I mean, we, He's moved to the big city. We, we can't when a Pat Miles special continues. Put the Vita in, leave the lookalikes out. Mix the salsa in, pop it in and pull it out. Use some lookalike, who knows what may come out. With the Vita, there's no doubt. The Vita! The Vita cooks better. Even the good things in life must change, like America's best-selling convertible, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible. So for 1994, we decided to make a few extra changes. We started by including air, automatic power windows, and dual airbags standard. We even made new structural improvements. Oh, and one other little change, the price. It's not $24,000, not even $20,000. The new Chrysler LeBaron Convertible is just $16,999. And that's change you can put in your pocket. Hurry to your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Here at my house, it's big news when my sister and I agree on anything. Like new Genio Natural Choice Turkey. My discovery. We love the Natural Choice line because there are no artificial ingredients or hormones. We don't want our kids eating anything weird. They're weird enough already. Natural Choice comes out moist and tender every time, even at her house. You know, the more natural we can make our lives, the better we like it. So then what's with this hair color? The new Genio Natural Choice Turkey line. A change for the better. I never was one for sleeping in. Every morning, Bert Morrow does what he's been doing for years. It makes him feel better. It's not of my nature to sit around on my duff. Eating a Chiquita banana every morning also makes him feel better. It's magnesium and valuable potassium help give him what he needs to enjoy the slow-paced life of a retiree. <laughs> Maybe when I'm 100, I'll take up shuffleboard. Chiquita bananas, quite possibly the world's perfect food. 
I think it plays a great variety. One of my favorite songs is The Power of Love, Celine Dion. My car, it stays on that station. <laughs> the best variety of the 70s, 80s, and today, KS95. Just a few months ago, Dee Long was ready to give it up. But today, she's back on the stump and running for her ninth term as a Minnesota state legislator. She was the first woman elected Speaker of the House, making her the most powerful woman in state government. But an investigative report on KSTP-TV, which showed Long golfing at a national convention of state legislators in California, followed by the phone gate scandal last summer, forced her resignation. I want to apologize to the people of this state for any perception of wrongdoing or embarrassment. Well, I think in, in many ways I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. On the golf course? In part, yes. Uh, I, I think I assumed that uh, if one had a rational explanation, that explanation would be used by the media. And it wasn't. Those shots on the golf course were taken when there was virtually no activity going on. That's not the way it was portrayed. But weren't you signed up for sessions that you didn't attend? No. At the time you were golfing? I was not signed up for any session. There is a traditional uh, golf outing, and I was invited to it. It was Saturday morning. It started at 7.30 in the morning. The shots were taken then. Uh, there was little or nothing going on in terms of any meetings at that point. So, Dee, you're saying you did nothing wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I did something that could have been perceived, certainly, if it were taken out of context uh, as wrongdoing. With the way the public feels right now about elected officials, using their positions as positions of power and privilege and perks, to see you on television golfing at a conference where you're supposed to be working, why, why put yourself in, in that situation to be criticized? I was naive enough to think that a TV station would not send someone photographing you golfing before the conference even started. Uh, in terms of the telephone situation, uh, certainly there were enormous public relations mistakes that were made. Uh, nobody ever accused me of any illegal activity. Uh, but I think ultimately I bore the brunt uh, for Mr. Welly's actions, perhaps to a greater extent than Mr. Welly has. Are you angry? I, uh, I have very mixed feelings. I think that Alan Welly could have come forward and exonerated me. Uh, he didn't. There was the perception, though, Dee, that you were protecting or not releasing the information that the public, in their opinion, had a right to know. I had no ability to release anyone's phone records other than my own, legally. As we worked through the process, I took steps to repeal that law so that the records could be released. I also urged Alan Welly to release his own phone records. Did you make mistakes? Oh, yes. I wish that I had immediately gone to the Attorney General and asked that this be investigated. I certainly would have made the fact that there had been uh, an incursion, a, a break-in, if you will, into a legislator's phone number and that a large bill had been run up. Was there any desire on your part, though, Dee, looking back on that situation, maybe even subconsciously, to try and cover it up? I don't know. Um, subconsciously, it's hard to say. There was no sort of all of us getting together and saying, let's keep our mouths shut about this. It was an issue that was discussed within the legislature. Why are we changing the phone system? Because there was an enormous bill run up with fraudulent use of this. Are you a different person today, Dee, based on what you've, what you've been through and how you've come out on the other end of this? Well, I like to think I'm a little uh, sadder but wiser. The pace is not as hectic. The phone doesn't ring as often. But Long says it's given her an opportunity to reflect, to garden, and to spend more time with her family. My little old lady in sneakers. <laughs> For 28 years, Nick Long has been Dee's husband, helpmate, and staunchest supporter. 
you know, I understand, I think, why Dee wants to run. Uh, when she was in leadership, she got very removed from legislating. Well, I'll see you whenever, and I'll call you. And uh, she's passing a lot of bills now and working on the floor and doing all the things you have to do to get legislation out. The likelihood of your ever being able to assume a position like speaker doesn't really exist anymore, does it, Dee? I don't think so, but uh, that's, that's not what I'm focused on. And whether or not I have power uh, isn't really that material. I think that women tend to use power for what it can do. Uh, I've known very few women in, in office who relish power uh, for itself. There, I've known a number of men who do. How much of your fall from grace do you think, Dee, was caused by the fact that you were a woman with a lot of power? I think it played a role. I think uh, uh, male legislators would not have been uh, treated in quite the same way. What, what do you think is wrong with politics today? I mean, what, what's happened? A number of things. Uh, we have more career politicians or people using the legislative seat as a ladder to something else. But, but D, so they, I mean, people would say that you're a career politician. But I don't define my life as being a state representative, and I never have. But don't you think, D, that people look at somebody who's been in office as long as you have, who has been through what you've been through, and they think there's something not quite right here about a person who wants to go back to that? Well, I think that may be true for people who don't know me. You haven't lost your enthusiasm? No. I had for a while, frankly. Uh, and I did spend a lot of time uh, just thinking by myself. I also spent a lot of time talking to people whose, whose opinions, political and otherwise, uh, I respect. And uh, have I been in too long? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, certainly the voters will make that determination this fall. Still ahead, he's saying, if you could do it again, how would you do it? What would you do differently? It'll say. It's a brave new world for Paul Douglas on the air in Chicago. But Kent Herbeck's been happy to spend his entire career at home. You always hear Tommy Lasorda talking about if you cut him open, he'd bleed Dodger blue. Well, I've already looked. My blood is red. When a Pat Miles <laughs> special continues. National Car Rental, everything we do is aimed at one single goal, to keep you moving. So choose National, because green means go. Oh, Good evening, I'm Paul Majors, coming up tonight at 10 on Care 11 News. Take a look at this picture. This boy has been missing since yesterday, and Minneapolis police are asking for your help in finding him. We'll have the story tonight at 10. Also tonight, when it comes to the Timberwolves negotiations, somebody's not telling the truth. We'll have the latest on that. And Paul Douglas delivers his last forecast before moving on to that weather job in Yucca Flats, Arizona. Hey, I know it's hot there, but he says it's a dry kind of hot. We'll see you at 10. You're just as good as gold. It's just something you of premium gasolines, but only one that drivers rate the highest quality. Amoco Ultimate. It's as good as gold. Running on Ultimate. Rolling down the road. Feeling the fun of just as good as gold. Amoco Ultimate. Just as good. Gonna take to the streets and spend some time on the road. I need a truck that'll take me where I wanna go. I need a Dodge. Mmm, Dodge. I'll take a Dakota, it's the top of the line The first mid-size pickup and it's one of a kind That's Dodge, Dodge. from America's truck stop Dodge Overall, Dodge carries the most power, the most safety features of any line of pickups on the planet At America's truck stop, your Dodge dealer I've been around the ball field for, well, it's going to be 34 years here in a little while
Peace. Everybody says hard work, this and that, and I understand a lot of people have to do hard work and stuff, but I've never really been a person where I've went out and really did a lot of hard work, enjoyed myself playing the game. I think that's maybe one big thing, but a lot of hard work, no. God-given talent and, and common sense has got me a long way. Ken Turbeek has been blessed, no doubt about it. There have been few first basemen in the league who have played as well and have had as much fun doing it. Herbeek has lived the dream of thousands of young boys who yearn to grow up and play professional baseball. And he's done it in his own hometown for his entire 13 years in the majors. Herbeek was the only rookie named to the American League All-Star team in 1982. And he helped lead the Twins to two World Series championships. But the moment Herbick most cherishes took... You know, Ken, a lot of people said that <clears throat> a little piece of your heart was nicked away when, when your relationship with Gary Gaetti kind of soured and he left. It was like losing a friend and losing a person. I, I, said, I actually said in the paper that I, it felt like a death in the family, and it did. I mean, it was like one extreme to another, but uh, it was something that he did for the better of himself and, and help himself out, and now it's like... Old time sex again. It's we're we're back to the same things again. You you certainly could have left Canton. Left. Chosen to, to make more money, go to another oh. team. I just didn't. It, it wasn't feasible for me to go someplace. I mean, I got I got a lovely home and, and family all here. It was to make a couple more million dollars. It didn't had nothing to do with going anyplace else. I I wanted to stay here, and I'm very happy that the twins let me stay here. Right decision. Never looked back. Uh uh. I would have been really looking back if I would have went someplace else. All right now, Pat, this is the worst part of the day right here. Running. I uh, hate running. You know, you had so much and have had so much criticism about your weight and keeping in shape. And has that been a hurtful thing, Kent, or have you been able to shrug that off? I, I've said I'm, I'm not the greatest athlete that ever walked the earth. I'm not going to be Jack LaLanne or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I could be John Candy. <laughs> I've come to realize that I've, I've, people have tried to change me, and I don't want to be changed. I just want to be Kent. Do you think you would have been a better ball player had you been thinner? or? I don't know, you know, but I'm happy with what I have accomplished in the 13 years I've played this game so far. Uh, I think anybody would be happy. I just look at sometimes people being jealous when they get on you for something. I mean, they have to pick on you for something, and it's, you've got critics, don't you? Well, just, you know, few. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more nervous for opening night than I am, than I have been for the two Game 7 World Series games. You always want to get off on the right foot. You always want to win the ball game, and you get a good shot at the office here now. I still really have a good time at the ballpark and like to have fun there. And, uh, but it's getting harder and harder to, to go out there and have fun because it's getting harder and harder to get the body out there to do what I want to do. So um, I'm not saying this is my last one, but it's, you know, uh, it could be very, very well be my last one I'm going to be going to on opening night. So hitting sixth, line up on the board. For the Twins, batting six, number 14, the first baseman, Kent Herbeck. Have you decided for sure what you're going to do? <laughs> Have then? I decided? You sound like a man who has made a decision. Well, I've pretty much made up my mind. I think that, that, uh, that I don't think I'm going to be playing next year. But uh, I don't want people to look at it and say, well, if he's not playing next year, is, it, is this year going to be as exciting as he's going to like playing this year? I still, excite, you know, I still like playing the game. But like I say, it's it's no fun waking up in the morning and having to go right to the aspirin bottle and, and eat some aspirin and, and get myself going before I, I get to the ballpark even. It is a tough decision because I've got a lot, lot to look forward to after the game. I want to spend some time, you know, Minnesota's outdoors and I love the outdoors. I haven't got a chance to spend outdoor in the summertime. I want to go hang my feet off the dock someplace and, and uh, you know, wish my feet in the water. And, and spend time in camp and go out with the family and, and do stuff like that. Being a family man, too, has changed you, hasn't it, Kent? Oh, yeah, a lot. Can you give Daddy a buddy kiss? <laughs> <laughs> I love her to death. She's fun. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a baseball player out of her or something. Or... It's fun being Dad. I like the title of Dad. Well, you said that was your greatest accomplishment. 
Yeah, could be. Yeah, it is. Somebody like me to create something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kent, will you show us some of your uh, memorabilia in this red, white, and blue house? <laughs> this one doesn't even look like you. What are you trying to say? Well, I, I don't know. It just doesn't look like you. That's what mom told me to keep my elbow up. Your mother told you to? Yeah. My mom's gone to every game that I think there's ever been at the Dome. She might have missed a dozen of them in the last 13 years. And Lou Gehrig behind you. Yeah. Lou Lou. That's a tough one to look at once in a while, I guess, after you think about what went on. I suppose that the... I mean, it would have been wonderful for your dad to see you in the World Series, huh? Yeah, well, he saw me play Major League Baseball, I guess. He probably had a better seat than anybody during the World Series. Yeah, when you think about it. If he could see through the roof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they called him the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, but he died a young man, just 37, of ALS. The same disease that took my father's life. The, the, the thing I miss now is not being able to spend time with him. Because I know he wouldn't have told me anything to do anything different. He wouldn't have told me to be skinnier or anything like that. Uh, he was that way, too. He liked to have fun. There was always a smile on his face. Well, he'd be proud of you, Ken. I think he would be. Because I, uh, I think I've done good and, and had good times, and, and uh, I'm not going to quit having good times. Let's put it that way. A lot more fun left to go. Next, it was a broadcasting coup for WBBM-TV to woo Minnesota's favorite weathercaster to Chicago. And if somebody comes to you and says, we believe in you, and we, we think you can do it, and we're going to give you the tools to do it, and we're going to make it worth your while to come to Chicago. And CARE didn't do that. CARE's offer was fair. When a Pat Lyle special comes right back. We went to Nashville, where fried chicken is king, to ask how could we make banquet fried chicken better than ever. More chicken on the chicken. Don't be stingy with the chicken, please. We heard you. Now banquet gives you bigger, meatier pieces of our lip smacking chicken. Yeah, there's more to banquet than ever before. More chicken on the chicken. Try new banquet skinless fried chicken, too. Nice and crispy, the way you like it, but with 25% less fat. You sure know chicken. When summer finally arrives, with all that boating, hiking, and camping, nothing can keep Minnesotans from getting out and enjoying themselves. Well, almost nothing. That's where cable TV comes in handy. Because with cable, you can get out and explore the great outdoors. Take a summer road trip. Hey, go castle hopping in Europe. Or taking the old ball game on MSC. And if you do go camping, take a tip from me. Bring enough cable to reach! Get with it! Get cable! Right now, installation's under 10 bucks. Just call cable TV. Huh? Oh, one more thing. With every new hookup, the Twin City Cable Companies are going to contribute $2 to Hero, a program that helps the homeless here and all across the country. So there's another good reason to get cable. Call Cable TV or 222-5388. Step right up, step right up to the Hyundai Big Deal event. Now, through Saturday, get huge savings with no money down or no payments till November on every 94 Hyundai. And right now, pay only $69.45 for a brand new Hyundai Excel, America's lowest priced car and voted number one car in its class. But when we say end Saturday, we mean it. So if you miss out, you're out. So look for the big tent at your nearest Minneapolis Hyundai dealer for one of the best deals of the year. Whether it's an irrational decision, no time will tell. But, I mean, there's something mildly intoxicating about wiping the slate clean, starting with a clean slate and the right tools, and saying, all right, build something. And that's what they've done in Chicago. And make it all one motion again, please, Paul. And action. Paul Douglas, experienced, innovative, founder of Earthwatch, WBBM's exclusive 3D weather system. Join Steve Baskerville and Harry Volkman. Paul Douglas is on his way to Chicago to build Maybe what he and WBBM-TV right. hope will be the same rating success he's had for the past 11 years in Minnesota. The young man who started out as Kara Levin's weather boy went on to become one of the most popular meteorologists in the country and also one of the most prolific, creating his own computer animation company 
writing a book on local weather and producing a daily column for the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Accomplishments he is now trading in for a new job in a new city. Well, did you just feel like you'd sort of climbed all the mountains here and that there was not a challenge left for you locally? For me, the fun part is having the ingredients and building. But there's a lot of growth left for CARE 11. And I don't know. Um, it's a good question. I think there was a fear of getting into a rut, a nice rut, a comfortable rut, but a rut nonetheless. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's been 11 years. It's been 11 terrific years. You know, there's never, ever one reason somebody decides to, to make a change in their life. But one of the things that you talked about so much in the beginning was the fact that you wanted to go back east and go back home. And, and I think a lot of people were shocked when, in fact, they found out you were only going to Chicago, which is not that far east. <laughs> well, we looked at the opportunities uh, and it looked for the longest time like it was going to be Philadelphia. But in the end, the economic package, the commitment to technology, and just, as I said, just the interest in weather, people just didn't care about the weather the way they do in the Midwest. So I've gotten spoiled in that regard. There's no question I've been spoiled working in Minnesota. So it's not that I've stopped loving Minnesota or the people I work with. It's just I sense an opportunity. and. Majors, he kids me every now and then. He says that I'll, I'll be back. You wait. In five years, I'll be back as a casino greeter. <laughs> hey, you screwed up. You trusted me. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Too persistent with your parents. Eleven years ago, Paul Majors wasn't convinced this was a partnership that would work. In fact, the first time he saw Douglas, Majors immediately dubbed him the weather geek. But the geek and the genteel anchorman developed a rapport on the air that viewers found amusing and provocative. And together they brought Care TV out of the ratings wasteland and took the 10 p.m. news all the way to the top. And uh, I'm going to miss it. In fact, I just re really, it's been within the last couple of weeks that I realized that I have been depressed. And uh, we're very close. It's like a big part of me is, it's like a divorce. And I don't want to get divorced. <laughs> You're still in love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Majors is uh, sort of the older brother I never had, never wanted. Uh, I wish I could take. I wish I could take him with me. What are you most proud of, Paul, over the last 11 years that you personally have accomplished here? I'm, pr I'm pr proud of my family, and and this. I mean, this was the ideal place to launch a family. <laughs> Honey! Okay, Brett, you gotta concentrate. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Fish is gonna have whiplash. It stays like the David. <laughs> I think about reconsidering. <laughs> Five years ago, Paul and his wife Lori designed and built their dream home on Lake Minnetonka. Their two sons, Walt and Brett, love the lake. For Paul, the solitude here has given him a place to design and test the latest software for his computer graphic company called Earthwatch. Earthwatch has been probably the hardest thing I've ever done. It's, it's also been one of the more satisfying. I set out to create the ultimate weather tool, something that I could use on the air. It's actually turned into more than I thought it would ever turn into. Uh, we've got nine products. Uh, we're doing new simulation, automated severe weather. But it's up in about 28 cities now. It's up in Argentina. It's up in Toronto. So, I mean, we sense a global market for this. People who want to stand out visually and try some new things. We have all the computer gizmos. Yeah, what's this snappy 3D thing that you guys do? Oh, the Earthwatch stuff. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, I figure if, if, if we can't predict the weather, at least we'll make it pretty. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> Douglas is already promoting his weather like technology on the radio in Chicago <laughs> with Steve Cochran, the same DJ who helped him get started here on KDWB. Uh, you're going to be a big deal here, and uh, everybody ought to start paying attention. Paul is a competitor. Uh, he knows how to win. Bob McGann is Paul Douglas's new boss, but the two met years ago in Minneapolis when McGann was the general manager of WCCO-TV. He is a true talent. Uh, he dominated weather in the Twin Cities up against very stiff competition. Uh, he's going to be a big hit in this town. What if in that corner we build the monitor and start putting all your equipment around there? When McGann was promoted last year by CBS and sent to Chicago to manage its station there, 
He set his sights on bringing Paul Douglas with him. There was the offer of a bigger salary, of course, but Douglas says it was BBM's commitment to his state-of-the-art technology and the chance to be the Windy City's first outdoor meteorologist that clinched the deal. So where are you going to stand, Paul? To I don't give know. It, I... Give it to us uh, the way you envision it. You can have a nice, a nice scenic, scenic view of the parking ramp. I think this will be, no, right, right in this corner. But the notion of playing to the street, if you've got a driving rain or snow, and see how the people are dressed, see what's going on. It's not the same, though, is it, Pat? It's not a backyard. No, it's not the same. When you first came to the Twin Cities, I think you were called the weather boy, and I mean, the press was not that favorable. They, they, yeah, they were. They are you afraid of, of the same thing happening in Chicago? It can't be too much worse. Yeah, maybe it can. I have no illusions that it's going to be easy or simple or that it's going to happen in a month or a year. So, I don't know. I'm not burning any bridges. I hope I'm not burning any bridges. Would you consider coming back sure, if it doesn't work out? You gotta keep all your options open. Absolutely. I'm not sure you can ever really go back, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna rule that out. That casino job. A Pat Miles special will return in a moment. We're a species of planters of diggers and shapers and cultivators. We set out, shovels in hand, to clear a path for beauty. And just as we admire the earth's plenty, we respect its perils. So we call before we dig. That way we'll be around to appreciate the finer things, like watching the grass grow. This message was brought to you by the gardeners of Minigasco. Hey, America, something's missing from your sandwich. The great taste of cheese. It makes your so-so sandwich sensational. This turkey sandwich is as plain as it can be, but add some zesty cheese. It's such a hit, they'll vote it MVP. Mmm, love it with cheese. Your roast beef sandwich scores a zero, but add some tangy cheese, you've got a great American hero. Oh, I think now this it. is a winner. Give your sandwich a new attitude with cheese. Over the years, the resale value of the Lexus LS has been extraordinarily high, which is one reason why its lease payments are noticeably low. In fact, now you can lease a Lexus LS for less than you could in 1989. Go figure. The Lexus LS. It's a historic value at Lexus of Wyzetta. No matter what you drive, you probably work hard to take care of it. And Super America can help. Our Premium 92 with Injector Guard Plus helps an old car give its best performance and a new car stay at its peak. So take care of your car from the outside. And with 70 years of gasoline refining experience behind us, we'll help look after the inside. Super America Premium 92. We never stop getting the most from your car. Super America, we never stop. Get a camcorder from Sears Brand Central and shoot months of summer fun with no payments. Shoot a summer full of backyard beaches, ball games, barbecues, and brides. Because for three days of the Sears Memorial Day sale, you can ask for delayed billing and have no payments and no finance charge for 90 days. Sears sells top camcorder brands like RCA, Panasonic, Sony, and Dell XI. And the payments take three months off, only through Saturday at Sears Brand Central. Next time you're watching a weatherman, be more than a fair weather friend. Whether it rains on the just or on the unjust, rain it must save your disgust. I'm only just a weatherman. 